Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Alton West. Today, I will have guests on from LaGrange College. Also, I will have a guest on from the Lafayette Society of Performing Arts. So stay tuned for those interviews coming up in just a moment. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm sitting down with professor from LaGrange College, Lee Johnson. Lee, welcome to the show. Thanks, Your Alton. Glad to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with you, and I think this is my first time getting an opportunity to sit down with you on the set and also to kind of find out a little bit of what, what you do there at LaGrange College. Before we jump into that, Lee, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a composer, and I teach music at LaGrange College, of course. Been there since 89 and uh, had the opportunity to help restore the music major that had been, I guess, absent and silent to some extent for maybe 25 years before I uh, got started and now we have quite a large program chaired by Tony Anderson uh, and we have many faculty and new facilities and I teach primarily composition and music technology so I'm around uh, the, crea the creative types, the songwriters, the composers most of the time. Oh my, mm -hmm. very exciting then. I mean a composer, songwriter and all of the above and also teach music as well? Uh, yes, and the, the kind of students that I would have are of every every category of uh, creativity. We have uh, film composers, we've got sacred music composers or church music composers, we've got rappers, we've got rock and rollers, video game. Uh, it's it's quite a diverse group. Yeah, that sounds like it. Like the whole gamut there, I guess, is it. And this is a, a new major that LaGrange College is offering, uh, you say, as an absence for 25 years. Is that correct? Well, the, the new major that uh, I wanted to share with you today is now the, the next step beyond this composition degree, which started when I soon after I got to the college. Okay. Now, we are uh, taking another bold step, I suppose. I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of fearless, and you know, I guess that's maybe a good thing. <laughs> but uh, it seemed like a, a really wonderful extension to consider video. Uh, President McAlexander had been throwing the idea around in conversation for a few years, and it started to pop up more and more often. So the conversation started with him and with the administration to see, should we look into video as a possible program or department? Oh. And the conversation went well okay. because most people are interested in video sounds like a good fit seems uh -huh. like it uh, almost seems like well have, why weren't you doing that before but we didn't have a facility and uh, and when Westside uh, Magnet School or Westside Middle School came along uh -huh. as an option for the college a bunch of excitement started to bubble up that I wonder what's going to happen when that new facility comes online well it, in timing with that the conversation turned to the now a real possibility that we could consider uh, film and video. So now we're offering for the, and recruiting a freshman class for 2017 for the brand new uh, Bachelor of Arts degree in digital oh. creative media and film. Oh my! So we are or we made it. Oh my, That's, that is very exciting. And you're looking for your first freshman class. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to jump into talking a little bit about where you guys are located. But when you talk about film and video, why is it so important now that people be able to to do their own as opposed to maybe working for somebody else? Well, uh, our, you know, the covering of life or understanding life through a lens has exploded. I, I suppose we could we could give that to the credit to the to the cell phone and to uh, wireless technology. Mm -hmm. But the creative capacity of st of students and young people in the past used to be limited by. Uh, their ability to participate with a very large organization. Uh -huh. So you had to train and hope for uh, a chance in a very big enterprise. Music used to be that way too. If you weren't with a major label, you really weren't so much to talk about. That's right. Well, when the, the music industry kind of broke apart and independence started f flourishing, well, I think film and television is experiencing that now, not so much from a collapse like music had, mm -hmm. but from a, an explosion of uh, potential. So uh, schools like ours in the past probably would have stayed away from film because it would have been so 
unbelievably expensive to participate in it. Mm -hmm. And the passion may have been there, but the opportunity could have been out of reach. Mm -hmm. Digital technology uh, and quality digital technology kind of crossed a lot of lines in the sand maybe 10 or so years ago and now the uh, most quality and most affordable startups are you know using digital gear or blending digital to analog and so suddenly the facility the technology the need and then uh, a cultural change is almost like a, a perfect storm uh -huh. makes this happen oh my interesting you know and because you, when you think about it you film, video, a lot of times you always think about the major cities, New York, you know, California, or other areas and stuff. But now, here, LaGrange, and I think the uh, the Georgia is a very, uh, I, I think, uh, on, the high, on the list of high film producing uh, states in the nation now. And to be able to have a major right like that offered right here in the city of LaGrange is outstanding. What do you look for in a student? Because this, you're recruiting for your fall uh, 17 class. What do you look for in a student? Well, you look, f they, they may be interested and they may not have had any training. And also we have to keep our eye on the fact that they won't be a student forever. Are they capable of leaving and then going on to their next step? We have, we have tremendous confidence from the, the success we've had with the music students who've come here with, from varying backgrounds, all uh -huh. kinds of preparation or non-preparation, uh -huh. uh, but passion, talent, those are required, discipline, dedication, and, and some kind of plan. Uh, but the students who've left here have gone off to the cities you mentioned and gone to graduate school or stayed as professionals or in Hollywood now composing for TV shows or different series. And so it doesn't, it's suddenly not so important where you start, mm -hmm. but how, you, how the process works. And so the kind of student we look for in uh, digital creative media and film, passion, talent, drive, mm -hmm. what story they tell on day one, because you ask them, so nice to meet you, what would you like to do? What do you want to be? And, and they start to articulate their vision and most always there are some common things uh -huh. and then there's some things that just set that person apart from everybody else. I think one of the most sustaining successes we've had is that we <coughs> identified early on that every student is not just different, which we would of course, duh, yeah, but, <laughs> right. but every student is different enough to maybe need a different approach to their education. So no formula, no cookie cutter, no right. here's how we do it statement works uh -huh. other than maybe here's how we do it we start with you and we start with how you can find what you said your plan was and currently the the, the staff I work with Paul Hammock I've worked with for the longest okay. uh, and he's our technical director and now our chief uh, audio engineer we have a, a magnificent recording studio at the college now too we are able to uh, fashion a program and adapt to the students uh, uh, strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and then get them toward their goal so this new degree is almost like if you're interested that's enough because oh. well, I wouldn't expect you to have a background in video if you come from uh, a normal high school they that's probably right. didn't have that program either maybe that's you right. did it independently but you can't really have an education background or an educated background in that field uh, so it I think it's kind of a walk-on uh, okay. Now we you have to get into the college. You apply. You have right, right. SAT scores. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a complicated process and a wonderful process. But uh, some majors have always had this, the person discover after they've taken a biology class. <laughs> I really like biology. That's right. And then they, they they wouldn't have known that they had that talent necessarily uh, until a little bit later in their young life. Mm -hmm. Well, so it, it's kind of a joy to be able to say the same thing that we have a degree. Um, much unlike the music degree that I have been working with, with for some time, that you could discover it kind of late in life and, and then be successful. Absolutely. You know, wonderful, wonderful to be able to do that here in our community. And you mentioned a moment ago about, you know, when the uh, West Side Magnet School came available. There was a lot of energy about that. So I'm going to assume that's where you all are housed. Talk about yes. your location, if you don't mind. Well, it's uh, in the heart of the campus. So now the fine arts are all neighbors. Uh -huh. uh, the theater and the art department and music and now digital creative media and film are all in the same it's, neighborhood, which okay. is wonderful. And uh, the facilities that were uh, built within Westside include uh, mix edit suites, uh, uh -huh. pro audio rooms and pro video editing rooms, um, and astoundingly well done, designed by Steve Durr, a fantastic designer out of Nashville who's designed studios all over the world. Oh my. And then we have a film uh, or a video sh uh, sh shooting and production area. We have a stop motion animation suite. 
We've got uh, equipment storage, which is important for video. You have to have equipment going in and out and inventory mm -hmm. all the time. So you have to have a, uh, a really easy to... Uh, uh, Everything's in its place. Access all the cameras right. are here. Okay, all the cameras are made it back. No one forgot one in the field. Right. And you have to have audio recording environments. And to do a film score, you need a recording studio. Uh -huh. And uh, anyone who's visited our college, as soon as they see the recording studio, they have never seen one like that at uh -huh. an educational facility ever. Uh -huh. It's that good. And you said visit it, and I have not visited it. It seems like I need to take a visit over to see this Oh, location. we'd love to have you, yes. We definitely would love to come over. And, 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 and the students, are for fall, they can apply now, you, uh, like the regular do, like the students normally do, mm -hmm. apply. And if someone had an interest, could they give you a call and just kind of... Yes, uh, the best way, go to the college website uh -huh. and uh, look up digital creative media and film. They'll find the information. They'll find my uh, email and phone number okay. and the best way is to reach out just make one contact and then we'll start the conversation up and again since we're a smaller school we'll actually talk to the student you won't, <laughs> you won't talk to a form right or a, you know a robot uh, and then because it it's a it's a people business all the time That's the students right. come to study with people and we teach people the gears wonderful and the, the ideas are wonderful but it's still it's it's all about working Hands with right. some mentoring and, and educating and supporting and challenging them. Absolutely. Now you mentioned some of your staff. I mean, you mentioned one uh, Paul, I think it was that mm -hmm. you worked with the longest. Talk about some of the other personnel on your, on the staff. There. We have the degree is is nested within the the entire fine and performing arts division of the college. Uh -huh. And whereas some schools fashion their degree off an in, standalone independent uh, department, mm -hmm. we took a different approach. We uh, access the talented uh, faculty from all the fine performing arts so we have uh, people from theater from art and from music and then beyond that mm -hmm. business and creative writing in the English department so a student coming there who may be <coughs> mostly interested in feature film or documentary film or let's say music videos mm -hmm. they could be a specialist and get mentoring support from that specialty because there's enough elective choices for classes to say, you know what, I don't want to be that kind of filmmaker, I want to be this kind. And they could be distinctive even, even as undergraduates. Okay. Which means that there's a lot more people across the campus that are willing and ready to invest in the success of that student. If it's primarily a script writer, well that person can write the fantastic story but then needs someone else to That's produce it. it. Mm -hmm. But the way we team build, the, the, the junior and senior projects are built by the students co-producing. So you might be in charge on your film, but you might be in a supportive role for your Same peers' nice. film. Because okay. most of us get hired at some point, right? <laughs> we don't right. usually start a business. <laughs> so it'd be nice if we knew how to take to, yeah, orders right. and, 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 you know, and, and do something that's the vision of somebody else in addition to ourselves. Absolutely. And that, that team building is critical. Absolutely. Well, Lee, I want to thank you very much. This is so exciting. I do want to come over and take a visit of the, uh, of the facilities. And by me, maybe we could do a show there. Maybe you would. That'd be great right. if you could do a show there. Well, very yes. good. Well, Lee, thank you very much for coming on the Thanks, show Alton. today. And we'll hopefully take that visit real soon. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more City Week coming up in just a moment. A fierce, competitive spirit inhabits the DNA of students here at LaGrange College. Sixteen NCAA Division III teams, inspiring coaches, and some of the best facilities in the Southeast. Athletic, spiritual, and academic experiences. Discover more at lagrange.edu slash transform. Nobody wants to be stopped by a law enforcement officer. Everyone wants to feel safe. So we've trained our officers to first listen and then explain. We ask if you have contact with one of our officers. You listen, give him an opportunity to explain, comply with his requests, and if there's a problem, contact us so that we can investigate your complaint. Listen, explain, comply, then complain. Our safety and yours matters. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm sitting down with a guest from the Lafayette Society of Performing Arts. Um, 
Austin Treadwell. Austin, welcome mm. to the show. Oh, thank you very much, my friend. Well, Austin, right out the bat, I, I just got to go ahead and compliment you on your voice. You know, as we were off stage there, and I'm like, who's the guy with all that voice? Is that, that's your guest. I'm like, oh my God, I get an opportunity <laughs> to talk with him, huh? <laughs> just so, thank you very much, my that, friend. Well, thank you for being here today. And Austin, you, you are a part of the cast of one of the plays that's going to be presented at the LSPA. Uh, coming up here in October. We'll talk a little bit more about those dates in just a moment. But before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Uh, no, I don't mind at all. Um, I am a Southern man. If you get me started talking, I'm likely to never stop. So I hope you brought a sandwich. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, um, originally from Noonan, uh, born and raised there. Uh, started acting in Noonan at the community theater. And um, uh, upon getting out of high school, um, and looking around, uh, in my opinion, uh, LaGrange College had the best theater arts department in the state. Uh, I fell in love with the facilities and the staff uh, and came here, studied theater, got my degree. Um, from there, I, I went to New York, spent uh, 10 years there, oh and then upon leaving New York, ended up in LA, spent five years there, uh, met my exceedingly beautiful wife, and once we uh, you know, got married and had our son, we left Los Angeles okay. because uh, LA is a great place. but. It, didn't want to raise my boy there. Okay, I can understand. I've been to California. Like you say, it is pretty busy and, and, and expensive. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so both of those can get, gravitate you elsewhere quickly, right? Definitely. Absolutely. Well, we're very happy that you're here in our community. I just want to go back and talk about you. You said when you, upon leaving high school, you landed at LaGrange College. Talk mm -hmm. about your experience there at LaGrange College, if you don't mind, for a little bit. Oh, no, gladly. Um, Knowing myself and uh, how uh, <laughs> the, the distinct lack of sense that I had when I was young, uh -huh. um, I knew that if I uh, went to UGA like I really, really wanted to because I've been a, a dog fan my entire life, okay. uh, I knew that I would not do anything but drink beer, chase co-eds, and watch football games. <laughs> In that order, no <laughs> doubt. Yes, exactly. Okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, UGA's facilities, um, I was into them, they were great, but uh, what I really loved upon coming to LaGrange and the college was um, the smaller atmosphere. And honestly, uh, in all the professional theater that I've done since, uh, the Price Theater at LaGrange is still one of the hands down best spaces I've ever been in. Oh my. Um, and Kim Barber, and at the time Dr. Edwards, who since moved on from the college, uh, they really impressed me. And I'm endlessly grateful that I came here and was schooled by Kim Barber. She taught me, uh, besides the nuts and bolts of how to be a theater professional, uh, just much more about being a professional and a decent human being in general, you know. Very so, uh, you know, if you're, uh, if you're not half an hour early, you're not on time. <laughs> That's probably one of the greatest lessons she ever taught me. I'll Absolutely. never forget. You never forgot it, right? <laughs> All right. Well, very good. Well, you know, we always, you know, appreciate, you know, people coming in and talking positive about our college because I think they're a great asset here in our community. No, they are indeed. Uh, let me jump. Now we're going to jump into... And then there were none. Yes, sir. The plays that's going to be uh, presented here at the LSPA. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Well, and then there were none. It's um, a Agatha Christie murder mystery uh, written, uh, I want to say, in the late 20s or early 30s. Um, it's it, it's very impressive to me how uh, the suspense of the story stands up over time, mm -hmm. because um, like a lot of things from the period are undeniably from the period, you know, and have a little bit of that you know, 1920s and 1930s kind of flair to it. You always, it's, <laughs> it's almost like <laughs> there's a definite style to it that in a lot of ways doesn't translate like the majority of the work from the time. Okay. But uh, this piece does. The, uh, the suspense is real. Um, the danger the characters are in are real. I think it's a great Halloween show mm -hmm. uh, for the company. Um, and the cast that we have is absolutely incredible. It's all... Uh, a lot of highly experienced um, uh, usual suspects from the LSPA theater. <laughs> okay. And uh, we're doing uh, a lot of great work. I've been uh, truly impressed and I think it's going to be a great show. Well, I really, if we if we succeed, uh, we should get uh, some good scares and well, some good jumps. Very good, very good. And 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 with the voice, you no doubt of playing the main character. I understand, oh. Captain Philip Lombard, right? Uh, Captain Philip Lombard, yes, okay. one of the main. There's, um, it's it's not a show where you can uh, where I feel you can really say there's one okay. main. It's a a true ensemble piece. Everybody uh, uh, plays a. 
a very important role to the story. Okay. And um, and if we do it right, once again, you'll be guessing who the killer is. <laughs> maybe it's me. Maybe it's not. Ah. And, okay. Um, uh, but the cast is just incredible, and uh, I am playing Philip Lombard. Philip Lombard is uh, an ex-military man who has uh, since become a, I think they call me an adventurer and a ne'er-do-well, okay. uh, sort of a, uh, uh, a mercenary, uh, if you will, kind of a, well, I like to think of him as Han Solo because I'm a nerd and oh, Star okay. Wars is awesome. <laughs> 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 um, and yeah, it's very interesting. There's a, uh, in the show, there's a real mix of um, personalities, uh, like you know, an adventuring uh, mercenary uh, that I'm playing, uh -huh. uh, and it's, which is very nice because I just get to not shave and be scruffy. It's amazing, <laughs> and um, everything from that to um, a, uh, a judge. Uh -huh. um, to, uh, there's a policeman. There's uh, a few society people. There's a doctor, and. But they're all distinctly different and have distinct uh, personalities, and the way they react to the situation and the danger is, I think it's a lot of fun. It's okay. a real mix and keeps everything suspenseful. Well, very good. You know, and, and we, before we came on air, I, I think you kind of broke into character there a little bit and gave me a little bit a of, little the, bit. of the Brit bit. British <laughs> accent. You think we could get just a little sampling of that? So, oh, well, certainly. It's, um, uh, it's very funny because, of course, uh, uh, the show is British. Uh -huh. and. Um, in doing the accents, it's it's always fun because as Southerners, uh, we tend to be a little bit more laid back with a lot of the aspects of the language. Our vowels are lazy, our consonants are extremely lazy, and uh -huh. sometimes don't exist at all. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <coughs> uh, but in order to uh, strive towards a British accent, you really have to kind of move everything to the front of the mouth, uh, be extremely conscious of the consonants <laughs> okay. it's um and believe me my british accent is not ready for prime time okay. at all but um uh we're all doing very well, well very and good. uh it's going to be a lot of fun so if uh if anyone wants to uh have a good laugh at you know so come at, on out, at all of us doing <laughs> varying levels of british it's an amusing it's time, the show I to come and watch. So let's talk. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about when it's actually going to be taking place. Because <clears throat> I know that you know people are probably want you know around the Halloween time people want to get out and see something, do something different. Mm -hmm. Talk about. I think it's going to be the opening show is going to be October the twentieth. Yes, I sir. Understand. Talk about the uh, dates and and the times, if you don't mind. Oh, not at all. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Mm -hmm. Well, the style of uh, uh, theater that we do there, it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, there's not traditional theater seating. Uh, we actually set up um, uh, a big group of uh, tables with circular seating around each. Okay. And it's uh, a picnic style. Um, guests are uh, encouraged and allowed to bring in uh, any sort of uh, food, drink uh, that they uh, want, anything okay. from home. Uh, just bring it in their tables, you know, okay. set up and uh, just make a, a meal of it and hang out and have a good time. And um, so, uh, I would say show up around seven ish. Okay. I suddenly re I'm sorry. My it's very <laughs> funny. My mind just completely went. I just, okay. I just completely forgot the curtain time. But um, October twentieth, uh, the twenty first and the twenty second will be evening shows. Okay. Um, on Sunday the twenty third, there will be an afternoon matinee, okay. and then the following week on uh, that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we'll have uh, some more evening shows. Okay. Um, because my memory is sometimes extremely suspect, <laughs> I apologize for that. But any details that I cannot give, uh, don't let my shortcomings <laughs> deter you. Uh, please visit the I'll LSPA's the website. website. Okay, exactly. Very good. Uh, it is lsparts.org. Okay. Very good, very good. And you know, and, and, and I know that I've been down and, you know, Amy has been here on the show and I want to leave out and met Jennifer. I've been down and spoken with her and actually we did a show down at the LSPA and I understand that it, there's some changes that have come about down in, in oh, there. Oh, yes, sir. And I think you probably kind of had first hand in that as well. Oh, yes, yes. Um, one of the fun things about theater, one of the reasons I love it is that um, you have to know, uh, well, to do it well, you really need to know how to do a little bit of everything, <laughs> and um, I've done a lot of technical work as well. So I've learned how to be um, a 
rather good carpenter. So uh, I had a hand in some of the renovations. Um, but they did an abatement uh, since you know the building, mm -hmm. uh, the age of it, there was some asbestos in there. So okay. they abated and got everything out and everything is up to present day code and beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, new paint jobs, uh, everything looks nice, fresh. And the thing that I'm most impressed by personally is all the new dance floors uh, that are okay. in the space. Every dance studio in there has received a brand new dance floor, which is actually much more involved than it sounds. There's, mm -hmm. <laughs> there is some precision geometry that goes <laughs> in to the creation of these dance floors to give them that supple bounce. Okay. Um, there are multiple layers and very uh, in-depth, but I'm impressed by all the work that's been done and it's beautiful down there. Well, very good. And you know, you're talking about dance floors and, and a lot of time when you uh, say the word Lafayette Performing, uh, Lafayette Society of Performing Arts, we all thinking about just a place, but you all branch out and do much more than that. Talk a little mm -hmm. bit about some of the other uh, disciplines that you offer. Oh, certainly. Well, the LSPA um, pretty much uh, offers educational opportunities uh, for uh, really all three main branches of the arts, you know, uh, dance, theater, <laughs> Uh, and music, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, I'm you know personally most heavily involved with uh, the theater aspect, and uh, I've built a couple of sets uh, with the guys down there. Uh, okay. This is the first time I've um, acted with them since coming back, and uh, they've really, really improved. Uh, the theater is under the direction of an old college friend of mine, Ryan McCorder, as okay. the artistic director, and I I know his skill level and I know his dedication to theater, and I. I would have no worries about the theater, and I would, um, anyone interested in acting, go check that out because uh, they are under uh, very capable leadership there. Uh, um, I can't speak specifically to um, the uh, workings of the music department, but mm -hmm. quite often uh, when I show up for rehearsal, I hear their young singers, okay, uh, yeah, the young okay. singers of West Georgia practicing from right. their room, and they sound brilliant. Uh -huh. S and um, and of course, there's also the massive uh, and beautiful uh, Lagrange Ballet and right. all of their uh, dance side. So um, I know that they, uh, as an organization, offer uh, you know classes uh, and performance opportunities in all three disciplines. Okay. So anyone interested, check out the LSPA. They are a quality institution. Absolutely. Well, Austin, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an honor to sit down with you. It's a more so a pleasure to have you in our community and, and getting involved in the arts and hands-on because I know that sometimes, you know, our school systems are not knocking them. They have their hands mm -hmm. full and can't fill those, those voids. So we're very totally. fortunate to have the LSPA here to kind of fill those voids in our community. And I'm going to thank you very much for being on the show today and it's been a pleasure to sit down with you. Uh, same here, my friend. Thank all you right. very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more City Weekend just a moment. At LaGrange College, your journey toward achievement may take you in many different directions. The arts. Law. Ministry. Medicine. Experience LaGrange College, one of the South's most affordable, highly ranked institutions, and leave transformed. Discover more at lagrange.edu slash transform. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining for City Week this week. My guests have been from LaGrange College, Lee Johnson, as he talked about the film and video production courses that they are now offering over at the West Side School. So by all means, if you're interested, give them a call or go by the school and get more information. Also, my guests, ladies and gentlemen, from the Lafayette Society of Performing Arts, Austin Tidwell, as he talked about the upcoming play, And Then There Were None, that will be opening on October the 22nd and playing throughout the end of the month. So by all means, if you like more information, visit their website, and by all means, go out and patronize those acts that are taking place. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed these interviews, and as always, I want to invite you back for more of City Week. Why United Way? Because in some way, everyone in our community is touched by your donation to United Way of West Georgia. Yes, everyone. United Way helps 25 local agencies touch thousands of lives, even yours. To cause so many good things to happen, these organizations must have volunteers.
Fortunately, more than 2,300 local volunteers are now giving time to the 25 local organizations that United Way of West Georgia helps support. Yes, more than 2,300 volunteers. But more are needed. Please volunteer your time, as well as your financial support. You'll be astonished at what you'll receive in return.